Morning boys and girls, welcome to story time. Before we begin, let's just check who we've got in the class. Uh, Lee Parker, hello Lee, how are you? Could you take a seat in the front please? You're the smallest. That's it. Just stop kicking that ball around for five minutes. That's it, lovely. And who else have we got? We've got um, Ellie Maiden. Hello Ellie, stop running about, take a seat. Mm -hmm. Yes, take a seat Ellie. I know you're still running about. Are you running about still? Mm -hmm. Who else have we got in the class? Um, Gillian Smurthwaite. Gillian? <sighs> Gillian? Julian, are you concentrating? That's better. Oh, get rid of the lolly. What are we going to do with you? Before we go any further, I want to give you your homework for the next week. I'm going to show you three pictures and you've got to tell me next time I see you what they are. Here's the first one. And the second one. And the third one. So that's your three animals. If you can tell me next time I see you what they are, I'd be very impressed. But there's a fourth animal. It's the most feared man-eater ever to walk the planet. Everybody knows what it is. And this story is about that animal. So any ideas what it is, Ellie? Lee? Gillian? I do, I do. Julian, what is it? A guinea pig. A guinea pig. Yeah. That's correct. Now that we're all concentrating, we're going to have a story called Ellie and Ah. I think that's how you pronounce it. Not too sure. But anyway, this is how the story goes. Around 65 million years ago, four young dinosaurs were having a race. It wasn't really a running race because they were ankylosaurs, which meant that they were covered with huge plates of bony armour. The armour was so heavy that they could only waddle. All the same, they could waddle quite fast, and Ellie was determined to beat her three brothers. She reached the river, just ahead of them. I won, she shouted. She wagged her tail in triumph. Ow! 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 cried the three brothers behind her. Ellie looked around and saw them lying in a heap. What happened to you? she asked. Your tail happened to us, groaned Lenny. You wagged it again, moaned Kenny. It knocked us over, croaked Benny. My tail knocked you over? Ellie was sure a tail hadn't done anything of the sort. She wagged it again to check. Oh, don't wag your tail, shrieked her brothers. Why not, demanded Ellie. What's wrong with my tail? It's a lovely tail, said Kenny. It's just not the same as our tails, said Benny. It's got a great big club on the end of it, said Lenny. Ellie looked at her brother's tails. They were slender and pointed at the end, like her mother's and her father's tails. 
She twisted her head around to look at her own tail, but she couldn't twist far enough to see it properly. It looks fine to me, she said. It is fine, said Lenny. It's a very special tail. It's unique, groaned Kenny. Just don't wag it, pleaded Benny. This wasn't easy for Ellie. When she was happy, she wagged a tail, and since she was a very happy dinosaur, she wagged her tail a lot. But whenever she happily wagged her tail, everything in its path went flying. Her tail bowled her brothers over, it felled small trees, it demolished a nest of rocks that her parents had built so carefully, yet Ellie usually didn't notice. I don't see the problem. Now let's play tag, she said. Let's not, said Kenny. Whenever you're being chased, you wag your tail. We could play kick the coconut, suggested Ellie. No, we couldn't, said Benny. You wag your tail each time you kick. I'm still covered in bruises from the last game. Then what can we play, she asked. The brothers thought hard about it. I know, said Lenny. Hide and seek. So they taught Ellie how to play hide-and-seek. It was a great success. Ellie was very good at hiding, and while she was hiding, she kept perfectly still and didn't wag her tail. They played hide-and-seek all morning, apart from one small incident when Ellie wagged her tail and Kenny ended up in a ditch. Nobody got any bruises. It was Ellie's turn to hide. She found a good place among the trees and kept very still. She waited and waited, but nobody came to find her. After a while, Ellie poked her head out to see where her brothers were. Maybe they've gone for lunch, she thought. She couldn't see them anywhere, but she could see a strange dinosaur sniffing around. Ellie lumbered out of her hiding place and trotted over to greet the stranger. She'd never met a dinosaur like it. It wasn't an Ankylosaurus. It was taller and thinner, with long, strong legs and big, curved claws. Hello, said Ellie. The strange dinosaur turned round and grinned a wide, toothy grin. Well, hello there. It said. Have you come for lunch? asked Delly. Oh, I hope so, said the stranger, giving her still a wider grin. It had a great many teeth. Do you know my brothers? she asked. They're around here somewhere. We've just been playing hide-and-seek. The stranger licked its lips. How delicious! I, I mean, how delightful! Let's look for them together. Do you know where they'll be hiding? Oh, yes, said Ali. I know all the best hiding places. Excellent, said the stranger. Ellie was so happy to meet a new friend that she nearly wagged her tail. She stopped herself just in time. What's your name? she asked. The dinosaur looked puzzled. I don't think I have a name. Well, what do the other dinosaurs call you? I'm Ellie. The dinosaur scratched its head with its claw. I suppose I'm called... Ah! It said. At least that's what everybody says when they see me. All right, ah, said Ellie. Let's go and hunt for my brothers and then we can all have lunch. What a wonderful idea, said R. I better know where Lenny's hiding. Come this way. Ellie trotted off towards the thorn bushes. She was so happy to be playing with her new friend that she nearly wagged her tail. Again, she stopped herself just in time. When they reached the thorn bushes, she could see a nose sticking out. Found you, Lenny, she shouted. Lenny sat up and stared at the strange dinosaur. Ah! He cried. Oh, you do know him then, said Ellie. 
That's good. She was so pleased this time she couldn't help it. She wagged her tail. There was a whack and a thud. Ours come for lunch, she said. Ah, where are you? Ah crawled out of the thorn bushes. He had hundreds of long spiky thorns sticking out of his skin. Are you playing hide and seek in there? said Ellie. It's a bit prickly unless you have thick skin like ours. Are you all right? Fine, muttered Ah, trying to pull thorns out of his nose with his long claws. Let's go and look for Kenny next, said Ellie. I bet I know where he's hiding too. She lumbered off towards a swamp. Ah followed her, although for some reason Lenny didn't. When she reached the swamp, Ellie could see a nose poking out of the reeds. Found you, Kenny, she shouted. Kenny sat up and stared at the strange dinosaur. Ah! he screamed. That's right, said Ellie. Ah's come for lunch. And she wagged her tail again. She just couldn't help it. There was a whoosh and a plop. Suddenly, Ah was in the swamp. That's not a very good hiding place, Ah, called Ellie. It's rather muddy. You don't say, gasped Ah as he crawled out of the swamp, as well as hundreds of thorns he was now covered in sticky black mud. It's nearly lunchtime, Ellie told him. Oh, good, sighed Ah. We just need to find Benny. I know exactly where he'll be hiding. Come this way. She set off again. Ah followed her, although for some reason Kenny didn't. Ellie waddled happily to the edge of the forest where there were dozens of huge anthills. Sure enough, when they got there, he could see a tail poking out from behind the biggest anthill of them all. Found you, Benny, she shouted. Benny sat up and stared at the strange dinosaur. Uh -oh. He yelled. Yes, isn't it nice of him to play hide and seek with us, said Ellie. She was so delighted. You know what happened? She couldn't help it. She wagged her tail. There was a, <laughs> a splat. Ellie looked at Ah, who was now inside the anthill. That's quite a good hiding place, she said, but I can still see your back legs. Ah wiggled and squirmed and at last managed to pull his top half out of the giant anthill. As well as mud and thorns, he was now covered in angry ants. They scurried all over him, ripping him with sharp jaws. Oh, said Ah. He ran to and fro, trying to shake them off. Are we playing tag? said Ellie. She began to waddle after him eagerly. As she did, she wagged her tail. Thunk! went her tail against the coconut palm. A shower of coconuts fell on top of Ah. He tried to kick them away. Oh goody, said Ellie. We're playing kick the coconut. I love playing kick the coconut. She began to kick the coconuts at him. As she kicked, she happily wagged her tail. Biff went the coconuts, wallop went her tail. Whoa! went Ah, bouncing head over heels. That was clever, said Ellie. Can you do it again? And she wagged her tail some more in admiration. Ah! Oh! cried Ah. Wildly waving his claws, he galloped away. Are we running races now? called Ellie. She tried to race after him, but Ah ran too fast. She couldn't keep up. Soon, Ah had completely disappeared. Ellie was now quite tired and hungry, so she gave up the chase and trotted back to look for her three brothers. It's lunchtime, she called. Her brothers crept out from behind the trees. Has that dreadful Deinonychus gone? asked Kenny. You mean Ah? said Ellie. He is dreadful at hiding, isn't he? But he's quite good at running. 
We saw you wallop him with your tail, said Benny. Wish I had a tail like that. Me too, said Lenny. You really showed that dreadful Deinonychus a thing or two. I showed him lots of games, agreed Ellie. It was fun. She pulled up a mouthful of plants and began to eat. I think I'll go and find him after lunch, she said happily. I better know where I'll be hiding. I can't wait to play with R again. Well, there you go. And now Jill and I are going to do what we do every evening. See you.